a very active weather system moving across the Midwest this Friday evening. That's it, located right there in southern Illinois. Surface low right there, the cold front down into Alabama, the Gulf of Mexico, and a warm front extending up to the northeast. In its wake, a strongly defined dry slot coming in from Texas into Alabama to the northwest deformation zone. Comma cloud, and to the east, the warm conveyor belt, the low level jet, the flow of warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean, and some very big storms in southern Georgia and in the Florida Panhandle. Yesterday afternoon, the system was quite powerful. That's it moving across Texas, producing some storms in the Fort Worth area, and lots of dust from Junction all the way up to Lubbock. And that's the way it looks this afternoon. Lots of warm air flowing up north, temperatures coming up to 70 degrees around Akron and 71 at Albany, New York. That's a big change from what we had a couple weeks ago. And even out in the western states, lots of 50s and 60s, those sub-freezing conditions appear to be gone. And taking a look out in the Pacific, well, we've got another blast of Pacific cold air working into the West Coast area, going up north into Alaska. The usual Gulf of Alaska weather system bringing cold air out into the Aleutians and warm air coming up from the south, bringing temperatures into the 30s and 40s in Yukon. Still some very cold air in the Canadian high Arctic. Not much going on. Most of that air is just heading east or heading northeast. And out in the Atlantic Ocean, not much going on. 998 millibar system south of Iceland. And then coming back south, looks like even Newfoundland is warming up a little bit. Temperatures up near 40 degrees. And we notice a distinct lack of snow cover. There is some up in northern Minnesota, across Ontario, Quebec, and of course in the mountains, the Rockies, they usually have quite a bit of snow on the ground there. But the Great Plains is pretty much devoid of any snow, and even the northeast is looking pretty good. There's the cluster of storms in Florida, Panama Beach being hit pretty hard this evening, and the cell out ahead of the line, the main line, is located way up here. This thing looks like it probably has some rotation. You can see a little bit of a hook appearance. The storm, however, is being seeded from the south. That's a bit of a problem. But if we look at the base velocity, got a good circulation right there. Let's zoom in on that. There's the storm relative velocity well-defined couplet right there. We've got 42 knots inbound, 41 outbound in the center of the couplet located right there. And if we go up to the next frame that just came in, looks like it washes out a little bit, but that's still it right there. It's a little bit more broad, but we've got 30 in and about 40 out. So it is certainly rotating quite a bit. So that's where it's at right there. Let's zoom out and look at the reflectivity. The storm looks about like that. You can kind of make out somewhat of a supercellular appearance, the updraft region located right here, and that's heading pretty much right towards Panama City Beach. And then looking up the line, this all looks pretty disorganized. Let's go to Tallahassee. Now there we can pick up the outflow boundary. That's it right there. Outflow gusting out from this MCS. The main cells moving to the northeast, so these are becoming very outflowish. If we animate this, you can kind of see what's going on there. This is still an area of development, and very likely you're going to see new cells developing here, and that'll kind of support a continued southeastward propagation. Further out to the east, let's check out Valdosta. There we go. For the most part, this looks like warm advection type shower activity. The main complex well out to the east, 
And if we look to the southeast, there's a little isolated storm out near St. Augustine. And that storm has a top of about 45,000 feet. It's really going. Let's pull up the Jacksonville radar. That's probably about as good as we'll get it. Kind of a small, compact storm. Not very much rotation within that. But certainly the potential for some hail and some wind. And another cell down to the south. This will also have to be watched. Anyway, there's also storms well up to the north. Let's check that out. There's the Louisville radar. This also looks disorganized, but there is some lightning within that. Not expecting much development. And then further south, one little isolated cell way down there. Yeah, that does kind of have a indication of rotation, maybe some severe structure. You can see the strong reflectivity gradient on the south side, not so much on the north side. And switching over to storm relative velocity. Yeah, there's some strong motion within that. 34 out and 26 in. Not sure we have rotation at this time. It looks kind of outflowish right now. But of course that could change later as the evening progresses. Let's take a look at temperature records. We haven't looked at this in a long time. Uh, don't worry about that right there. These are going to be the records for this afternoon. Looks like we broke a record there in Massachusetts with 74. Also near a record 74 at Parkersburg, West Virginia. Continued warm for tomorrow out east. 77 degrees at Washington, Dulles Airport, breaking the record by one degree. No records for Sunday. When you see this, that means... Seasonable temperatures. And much the same for Monday. Oh, but what's this for Tuesday? Warm temperatures in California. 90 degrees at Burbank. 87 at Camarillo. And looks like 86 inland from San Diego. In Sacramento, 82. Those are all records. Wednesday, also looking hot out west. That means a ridge out on the west coast. Not really sure what's happening out east. And more of the same for Thursday. But it looks like it moves inland just a hair. So what I wonder is what the upper level charts look like. 500 millibar heights in black. That's the mid-tropospheric height field or pressure field, if you will. The colors are the Q vectors, where we have significant upward and downward motion, where we have a geostrophic flow, important processes in the atmosphere, like right here. And that's a, a couplet, very likely a wave in between there, and we're indicating upward motion out ahead of it and downward motion on the other side. So the bad weather located in that region right there. The jet stream, that's indicated by the packing of the height contours. The 500 millibar jet probably running about like that. Maybe a split stream pattern. But overall, it's a lot more zonal than what we've seen over the past few weeks. So let's take a look and see what we're looking at for this weekend. That trough comes onshore. That's going to be tomorrow morning. So the weather will be going downhill somewhat in California, maybe some rain, especially in the higher elevations. And that trough will continue moving eastward and amplifying as it moves into New Mexico and Texas. So once again, by Monday, what's the 21st? Is that Monday? Yeah, that's Monday. Deep wave, very likely ahead of it, some strong warm air advection, moist advection coming up from the Gulf and thunderstorms. And you notice that the waves are getting a little bit more north and south. That's a meridional pattern, less zonal. And the trend into next week. Yep, amplification of the pattern. That low in the Great Plains, kind of a complex feature. It looks like another wave works into the back of that first system. 
Then a couple more waves coming onshore, but it looks like they're hindered by this ridge in the Canadian prairies. And that ridge is definitely the culprit in some of that hot weather that California will be seeing next week. Then around the 26th, 27th, yeah, I've got to pop the calendar up here. That's going to be next weekend. Looks like a fairly strong system moving into California. Another upper level low there across the southeastern U.S., and that Pacific wave moves into the Great Plains, the Central Plains. So maybe some chances for severe weather there late Saturday into Sunday next weekend. All right, let's take a look at that forecast. There goes that outgoing low pressure system. Most of the precip by later tonight, mostly in New York, Vermont, Detroit, it looks like the stuff in Georgia starts shutting down. Not much of that left by tomorrow morning. Things becoming very turbulent and unstable in California. Looks like rain in the San Joaquin Valley, snow in the Sierra Nevadas, and that snow spreads into the Great Basin region. That system will be crossing the Rockies on Sunday, and you can see the stout southerly flow picking up the low-level jet gets established coming up from the Rio Grande up to Oklahoma and Kansas. The surface front well out to the west, kind of in that area right there, and out ahead of it, the warm air advection. And then we look at the situation on Monday. Lots of precip breaking out across Texas. That's warm advection rain, a lot of showers early in the day across much of North Texas, Oklahoma. And let's take a look at a sounding, say, just east of Dallas. That'll kind of clue us into the environment. And what we see here is enormous shear. 55-knot low-level jet, very substantial SRH. You can see those numbers right there. But the big problem, a lot of cold air near the surface, so we're not really set up for surface-based storms. A lot of that is in the lowest one kilometer. That's one kilometer right there. Trace that over, and that layer is not very buoyant. So we probably will have some elevated storms up here, but that'll be tapping mostly that part of the photograph. So even though at first glance it looks quite ominous, we may not see much out of that. But further to the south, it could be a different story. Houston... College Station, Interstate 45. Well, there is some capping early on in the day, but as you can see, impressive zero through one kilometer shear, probable hazard type tornadoes, and the storms probably will be rooted in the boundary layer. And as we get towards max heating, let's bring that up forward. A lot of elevated storms up to the north, Oklahoma, Arkansas, I kind of wonder if some of that may actually be severe. They are forming discrete structures, but once again, you know, you drop the sounding within that, and there's a lot of cold air below 7,000 feet. This is a warm front setup, and most of your buoyancy is up here, which is in that part of the photograph. So let's go back. Look at that in a little bit more detail. We really need to be focusing on the warm sector, and one way to do that is to go to the severe weather parameters, supercell composite, for example. There comes that slug of moisture early Monday, and we can see that most of the severe potential is focusing south of Interstate 20. Yep, Houston, College Station, Centerville, Crockett, Lufkin. So that may not extend very far north, but there is this weak signature. Could see some severe weather along that. Maybe some good hailers. Elevated, but certainly some hailers. Dallas, Muskogee, Fort Smith, and so on. Anyway, that's all I have for this evening. Nothing new to report on the Patreon front. 
for those of you who are supporting the program. I appreciate it very much. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Take care and we will see you early next week. Bye-bye.